This is Marie from Underground Crafter. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing the Baby Lock Brilliant sewing machine. This is a sewing machine in the genuine collection of sewing machines. I want to mention that I'm a Baby Lock brand ambassador and I have been since 2018 and I received this machine for free. Now, I do want to mention that I'm not literally unboxing it and that's because the day it arrived, there was a massive and unexpected hailstorm. I'm gonna put up a picture of what the box looked like when I saw it in the lobby. It was actually left down there for a few hours and the box was just a wet mess. Uh, but due to the way all the packaging is done, the machine itself and everything inside was dry, which is great. So uh, without further ado, here is my unboxing. Inside of the box, there is a whole bunch of styrofoam that protects everything. Uh, so I'm gonna just show you what is inside. It's my first time opening everything up. So I'll be as new to it as you are. Now I believe this goes on top for the spool of thread, but I will get a little more information once we open up the manual that came inside. I love this bag. I can probably use it for some fabric or uh, project bag. So I'm gonna keep this, not toss it away. Okay, since I've had a couple of baby lock machines before, I know what's inside of this pouch. It's usually, yep, uh, all kinds of goodies that go with your machine and that are usually stored in a storage case. So I'm gonna just pull these out and then we can take a look at them one by one. There are a couple of different size spool caps. Looks like two. A brush for cleaning your machine. Oh, a second. Uh, cap for or maybe this is the only one but usually where the bobbin goes there's a little plastic cover because it's a drop-in bobbin and that appears to be a cover for that some needles always helpful uh, and this is a slip open so you can uh, what I usually do is if the needles been used but not totally worn out I put it in upside down and slide it back closed and this is for the twin needle and a whole bunch of presser feet. Uh, this one I've actually used before. It's pretty awesome. It has a little guide. So if you're quilting, you can line up, uh, you know, your quilt lines. This is future Marie talking. After I did the unboxing, I realized I don't know the names of all of these different pieces. So I'm actually going to show them again later uh, after I open up the manual. So this is just a quick preview of some of the tools and presser feet, which I will go into more depth in a few moments when we get to the rest of the unboxing. So I'm gonna put these aside back in the case so I don't lose anything. Okay, this machine comes with its own walking foot, which is pretty cool. I actually have a walking foot already, but this one uh, looks a little snazzier, so I'm excited about that. I like that there's a lot of quilting related feet. This is the power cord. And I usually actually do keep this um, kind of safety plastic and this because I don't want the, the cord to be unraveling all over the place, so I usually keep those. This is just a simple case that you can cover the machine with. Obviously, you can make your own case as well or buy a fancy one, but this is great if you have cats like me. Uh, you need a little dust cover. Now, this is the foot controller, which truthfully, I don't ever use that much on my sewing machines, but it is good to have because there are times you need it. What I use is this start stop button that are that is on most baby lock machines, but of course it is good to have uh, a foot pedal because you may need it. And for some types of sewing, it's it's actually helpful. You can control a little better. This I'm sort of excited about. This is actually one of the reasons I wanted to get this machine. So if you haven't seen one of these before, it's a knee lift, and some sewing machines have it. There'll be kind of an opening. Uh, usually towards the right side of the machine and this is where you put in the knee lift and what the knee lift will let you do is you can use your knee instead of your hands to uh, lift up the presser foot so that you can uh, pivot or do something else with your sewing without uh, using your hands for that. Uh, now this book has 
Um, it has actually instructions for three different sewing machines. So the one I have is the Brilliant, but it also includes the Lyric and the Soprano instructions. So the Brilliant is the BL2020B. So I'm going to go through the feet and stuff in uh, just a few minutes with you. And this is a quick reference manual. That's just all you need to get started. And actually, even all you need to really get started, like to thread your bobbin, is in this one-page sheet that they've included. And then there's a brochure uh, for Koala Studios furniture and also, uh, you know, various different sewing machines and um, online resources. And as I mentioned, this is part of the Genuine Collection. Uh, I also have the Jubilant and I've actually also used the Joy before. So uh, these are a couple of different machines that they have in that collection. Okay, now we're on to the really good part, right? So let's see what's under this. Before I start turning stuff on, I'm gonna take off all these little pieces that are taped down. There's usually a good reason for that. These are the parts that they don't want to jostle uh, in travel. So I'm going to take these off and uh, again because I've had baby lock machines before I'm sort of familiar with how they work even though I haven't had this one before but usually this piece opens up yep just like I've thought and there's a storage case and you can see that there's um, space for extra bobbins this is a seam ripper this is a buttonhole foot, and these are some more feet. I'm going to go through the feet in a few minutes. Uh, I believe that this would be the, the foot that's on the machine, and this is probably one of the ones that was in that storage bag that we saw before. Okay, and then this up here. So this is kind of a new feature for me uh, compared to the Jubilant uh, because it has a cover, which is pretty cool. Again, having cats, that helps a lot. So um, this is for the top spool. This is where you wind the bobbin. You can see that there is a panel that shows all the decorative stitches, which is great. And one of the things I love about Baby Lock machines is they have this kind of numbered um, tutorial that explains to you visually how to thread the machine and also how to wind your bobbin. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna close that up. Okay, so I'm going to lift up the presser foot and pull out this piece of styrofoam. Then I'm going to put it back down. Or actually, maybe I should have left it up. Well, let's see. So this tape seems to be holding the thread cutter in place. And then I'm not sure exactly what this thread is holding in place, but something to be sure. So let me open this up again. Okay, back here there's another piece of, of uh, tape. And one of the things that I usually do, which of course I forgot to do because I'm unboxing this now, is take a picture of your machine with all the places the tape is on. Because if you move, you're going to want to put um, some kind of removable tape in all the same areas because those are the areas that they're trying to protect uh, from jostling during a move. Okay, so the flatbed attachment is the next piece that I think I'm going to remove. This is, uh, when you take this off, it'll expose the free arm, which you can use for uh, sewing cylindrical projects like cuffs or bags, um, sleeves. Okay, I'm actually switching sides because this is a little different than the machines I've had before, and it took a little more effort to pull it off. So um, that is the free arm, this piece here. Uh, and so it's taped up. I'm going to just leave this on the side for a moment while I take off that tape. And I'm going to lift this foot again so I can take this off. So I was right the first time. That cover is a spare because there is already a cover for the drop-in bobbin. There's also a needle on the machine and a presser foot on the machine. I'm going to put this back on. 
And then let's talk a little bit about the different feet that are included. I grabbed this quick reference guide and it does have a list of everything that's inside. So let's talk through the different feet because as I said, I haven't used all of them. Uh, so I don't know them all that well. So this is the zigzag foot on the machine. Um, it's also a leveling foot. I'll just uh, take this off a moment and show you. This foot has this little button on the side. Uh, when you press it, basically what that does is it allows the foot to go over more layers a lot easier. So if you're sewing something thick, um, this is something that will help you, this leveling foot. So I'm going to put it back on and I'm going to lower the presser foot. Okay, so let's see what other feet are included inside of here. So there is a monogramming foot that's N, so I'm going to show you that one. This is from the little case that's inside of the machine. There is an overcasting foot which is G. So this is great if you want to do uh, overcasting stitches on the edge of a project. Like I would use that, let's say, for fabric postcards or something like that. This is a buttonhole foot so that you can create buttonholes. This is a blind stitch foot. This is a button fitting foot to sew on the buttons. This is a non-stick foot. I've used these before uh, for sewing leather, um, like a Teflon foot, or you can also use them for vinyl. This is the stitch guide foot I showed you at the beginning. So if you are trying to line up stitches in parallel lines, this is a great foot for that. Aha! See, I knew I would discover what this piece is. This is called an adjustable zipper piping foot. I've never used one of these before, so I'm looking forward to learning more about it. This is an open toe foot. This is a quilting foot and I'm planning to use it to learn free motion quilting this year. That's on my to, to learn list. We looked at the walking foot earlier. I'm going to keep it in the little baggie, uh, but that is great for working over layers, working with um, cuddle, quilting, uh, all of that good stuff you can do with that. Okay, there were a couple of other pieces that I was like, what is this? So now I'm going to let you know what those are. So this is an eyelet punch. You can punch eyelets with this. This is a screwdriver that you would, I assume, use to take off probably um, the plate here and probably maybe for adjusting certain feet. This is called the L-shaped screwdriver, and the same thing, it's, it's usually, uh, I'm sure there'll be specific ways that you would use it to either attach feet, take off pieces, or do maintenance. And this is also a screwdriver, um, it's just disc, disc shaped. Okay, and as I mentioned earlier, this is a horizontal spool pin, so I guess if I wanted to use horizontal uh, thread, I would attach this, and I'm sure the instructions will explain how. Okay, this was the other mystery doodad that I was saying. What is that for? This is a thread spool insert for a mini king thread spool. So again, it's all associated with the thread that you would use. Because when I went to put the uh, this little uh, container with all the presser feet back in, I realized there was another presser foot hiding inside of the machine. And this is the eye, which is a zipper foot. Okay, so to neaten things up, I've put all of the extra spool cap covers and the tools and the needles into this little plastic uh, case. And I'm putting it down in here first, and then I'm loading this in. Uh, oops, now it goes this way with the feet. And so that will kind of all stay in there. And then there's a couple extra feet. And there's a little side piece here. So I'm putting those into that side piece. Okay, so as I mentioned, I like to keep these because you may want to wrap up the cord later. So I loosened it and then I'm going to tighten it back up uh, on the edge here. And then of course you're going to take off this uh, safety piece here. And then this is attached on the right side. Now I'm going to plug in the machine. All right, let's see. Wow, 
that's pretty quiet. Okay, English? Sure, sounds good. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed today's unboxing and I look forward to sharing projects that I make on The Brilliant with you. If you'd like to check out my unboxing of other machines from the Genuine Collection, look down below for the link to the Baby Lock Joy and the Baby Lock Jubilant unboxing. Have a wonderful day.